segment. Today I'm here in Wisconsin Rapids down at the DNR office and we're going to kind of pick up if you recall back in March, April when we did a segment on the fike netting. When we took samples from the muskies and walleyes and crappies um, during the winter months is when they'd process and gather all the information from this fish. And this segment's going to focus in more on the fish. And joining me today is Garrett Drock from the Correct. DNR office, the fisheries technician, one of them here in central Wisconsin. Uh, thank you for having me come in. No problem. Um, like I said earlier, we're going to kind of pick up from the fike netting. Yep. And exactly. I'll have you explain to us uh, what was processed during the fike netting um, and then kind of what the process is here and just kind of expand on that. Right. Just kind of educate us on what you guys do as far as aging and determining sure. these fish sure. conditions. Um, like Todd said, when we go out uh, and do our fike netting, we're also trying to take fin samples from these fish. And in this case, we're using the anal fin, mm -hmm. which is in the back of the fish. And we want to use that for a means of estimating age of these fish. And we use anal fins for two reasons. One, it's, it's a simple fin to remove, like Todd had seen before, it's just a side cutter, so you clip it off. Yep. And the other reason, it's not lethal. We can use other methods like the otolith or their ear bone or a clythrum, which is behind their gill, their fin gills, or between, behind their gills, but those are lethal methods. We have to kill those fish, and we definitely don't, we don't want, want to be to do doing that, it, especially no. not on the bigger fish. Yeah. Um, so what we've come up with is our best approach for estimating age, and we're going to use the anal fin rays to do that. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over, we're going to show um, through a picture the kind of the anal fin and would, uh, Garrett will um, explain the process of it and let's uh, see what To go back to where we were in the spring of the fish we're going to use this magazine uh, Muskie Hunter magazine kind of as a demo and as you recall the anal fin is located in the rear of the fish um, and Todd can link to Alright we got a female here she is laying eggs again cutting the fin Previous video on how we remove it. What we want to do is take off the first five or six anal fin rays, and uh, what that's going to allow us to do is remove a portion that looks like this. If I was going to orientate this sample with the with the fish itself, it'd look a lot like this, where this is the leading edge of the anal fin, and then this is number fin ray number five or six back there. We cut that off as close to the base of the fish as we can, and we stuff that in an envelope. And I can show you the envelope that we use. Um, this allows us to keep track of that specific fin sample, as well as all, all kinds of other relative data, like date, uh, the water body, the species, the weight, and the length, and stuff like that, and any, any, any individual tag numbers as well. So we'll put that fin sample inside the envelope and we'll let that dry for a while. We don't want that pliable or wet, we want that dry so we're able to cut it. Um, we'll glue it on to a slide like we have here and that's just basically acting as a platform to mount it on. We're just using super glue so it's something that's stable. And we're going to come over here to our saw. This is a low speed saw that we're going to use and we're going to insert the slide into this chuck and that's basically just going to hold that tight and in place. So now it's mounted and it is ready to cut. And there's a couple key things that we want to make sure we do when we're actually cutting these. Uh, we'll, we're going to first put this down and, and kind of get it set. There's a, uh, a micrometer on the side here that we can adjust laterally so that this fit, the sample will hit, uh, will hit on the saw. And then we want to make sure that the fin rays are perpendicular to the saw. That has to be as close to 90 degrees as possible, and that'll give us our best age estimate. Um, and this one has already been cut before. Uh, Jake Thompson, who was out in the boat, helped uh, do a lot of this processing, so it's cut. But I'm just going to turn the saw on and kind of let you guys see how, how this operation works. So everything's set thus far. Um, we got the weight set pretty much where we want to go and turn this saw on. You can see it's not rotating very fast. We don't want a, a super fast cut on this. And now it's going through the cutting process. 
and the idea with this blade is um, it's a very fine blade so as well as cutting it you're actually polishing the edge of it uh, which is going to be real key when we do our edging um, there's actually coolant in there so we're not burning through it and it's going to leave a bunch of black marks um, and so that's that's basically how the cut goes it's going to take about a minute or so to make one cut um, assuming that we have that cut done what we'll do is we'll We'll lift it up and we're going to move it over using this micrometer 1.5 millimeters and then we're going to start our cut again and so that 1.5 thickness is going to give us our cross section that we need to actually do the aging. It's already processed and um, I can put it down here. So this is the cross section that was re removed from a different uh, a fish sample and this is looking at it um, like you were looking down the fin. Yep, so we'd be looking um, at can, it straight down yep, like that. You can see the five or six different fin rays on there. They're doubled up. They're right next to each other. That what, that's what constitutes a fin ray. Um, and that's the sample that's, that we're going to be working with. We use a real fine uh, turbine oil to put on that. That really clears up the image that we're going to get. It kind of erases all those little, um, little marks that's left mm -hmm. behind from the saw and stuff like that and gives us a real clear image. So what we can do now is transfer this over to our microscope. Um, this is kind of a high-powered di diocular microscope that we're using here. And we used to do it by just looking through the oculars here and getting everything um, arranged. But thanks to uh, Bill's Muskie Club, they purchased a computer for us with a really wide monitor. And you can see when I open the program up, it's going to display an image. Once I get in here, it's going to display the exact image that I see through the oculars. But now I got it on a oh. big screen. I got I can manipulate it a lot more easily, and it's going to make it a lot easier. Way to go, Bill's Muskie Club. So, uh, just to orientate everyone again, this is what you're looking at here is the top of of the sample. This would be the leading edge of the anal fin the first two or three. And you can see that those are much smaller than what we're going to get on the back. And these are not what we want to age for. These are missing annuli. They are not nearly as, uh, as exact as if we would use the middle portion or some of the, the fin rays that are in the back. So we're going to slide this forward. And now we're, we're kind of right in the middle of the fin, you know, maybe uh, six or seven uh, fin rays in. And the beauty of this system is it allows us to really do a lot of manipulation of what we're trying to age here. So I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can adjust the intensity of the light. Uh, I can do a bunch of things with this system uh, through the computer that I wouldn't be able to do through the microscope itself.